Welcome to Vivid Talk Live. I'm your host, Gwen Witherspoon. I am the Principal and Chief Visionary Officer of Adam Red and Atlanta Branding Agency. I'm a brand strategist and a better life coach. Vivid Talk Live is all about your personal and professional development. I am here to help you learn a fresh way of thinking and doing for all you were designed to build. Now, you can watch live Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on your favorite social networks or on my website at gwenwithisphone.com, where you will also find the replays. And tonight, I'm going to close out the Born to Produce series. Productivity is part of your destiny, your heritage, and your purpose. I've said that before, but your habits are the biggest obstacle standing between where you are right now and where your vision is taking you. I call the difference between where you are and where you want to be the wisdom gap. So let's close it by answering the question, what habits do you need to master? Please introduce yourself in the comments. Your questions are welcome. Ron is helping me monitor the chat. Uh, Thank you so much for joining me. Please share the link to invite your friends, tell them about the replays, and then we will get into it right after this. Now, make sure that you follow at Gwen Fuchsius on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Periscope, and YouTube, Gwen with a Spoon Coach on YouTube. Uh, and also, as always, I want to make sure you know where to find all the details about the show and about me. You want to visit my website at GwenWitherspoon.com, and you can watch live on the site, and you will see last week's replay at the bottom of the page. And if you click that replays button, it's going to take you to a page with all of the replays and descriptions. So you can find everything conveniently in one place. Now, I've also started uh, adding a blog each week. This week, we're talking about gratitude is a gift you give yourself. We're celebrating Thanksgiving tomorrow. And I felt like this was a really appropriate message to help you um, understand just a good strategy for how to um, invest gratitude into your own life and business. And then uh, at the end of every blog post, the last page, there's going to be a quiz. So this week it's, are you built for entrepreneurship? I think it's really great practice to go back and just check out each one of those uh, quizzes. They help you get some really great, valuable information and they're short and easy and simple to take. And uh, you can apply what you learn right away. So tonight, as I said, we're going to go ahead and finish out the Born to Produce series. Ooh, my hair is a little crazy today, isn't it? Let me, let me fix that. That'll, that'll, that'll irritate me the whole time. <laughs> okay. But listen, so um, we have been talking about, we are talking about engineering your corporate DNA. It's a, a, a framework that I've created to help you understand how to build anything. And it really includes every single step and all these different dimensions. You know, when you build a building, you have a foundation, like there's these layers that you're building upon. And so you have, you have to really take the same approach when building your business. And so my corporate DNA framework is really that. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of taking my time on the first three phases of that framework, because I want you to understand, I want to really sink in this whole idea about you being productive. We started with vision. Um, We want to talk about the problem that you're going to solve. And then you want to get into the, how are you going to get it done? How are you going to, um, how are you going to provide the solution to the problem, right? So I've I've stuck here. This will be week seven on this whole born to produce idea. And then we're going to move on to, there's like eight or nine Wait, eight, nine, 10, 12, what's 12? Nine more, there's nine more phases. Um, and so there's plenty to talk about, but I really wanted to hammer this point home. And so what I'm doing, as I mentioned before, we are using my flip productivity worksheets. 
They are tools that I use in my Flip Productivity Workshop to help you to understand how to plan, how to plan your work, how to produce, how to produce what you've planned, and then how to spend more time at play. Plan, produce, play. That's the slogan for my Flip Productivity System. So now I want you to mark your calendar. Let's, let's get this in first. I want you to mark your calendar for Sunday, December 27th save the date that is the date of our flip productivity workshop my first one and well my first well my first one in the 2020 and i wanted to do that because i want to give you an opportunity to go into 2021 don't you want to finish 2020 it's been a rough year but i mean it's been a challenging year there's been just unprecedented stuff going on and i know that emotionally that's a lot going, that's a lot of uh, just emotional trauma, right? That's what we we're talking about. Gratitude being the gift you give yourself. Because even in the midst of all of this, if you can learn how to be grateful, if you can learn how to count your blessings in the middle of a, a year like this, then you really can handle anything. And you can come out of this year triumphant in spite of what may have happened in your life, you know, the, the rest of the year. So we want to make sure, I want to make sure that I help you go into 2021 um, really from a solid standpoint in when it comes to building your business and just getting ready to produce more and do more, be more, and live the better life that you really want. So mark your calendar. to Sunday, December 27th. It's going to be a three-hour intensive because I really want to walk you through. I'm going to walk you through all the things we've been talking about for these last two months. I'm going to walk you through how to use these worksheets to answer some really in, in important questions for your business, okay? So that you can be more productive. And then, um, I, oh, and I wanted to make sure, are you getting uh, are you getting my Vivid Talk News newsletter? I just restarted that as well. And so every week, it's going to give you at the top of the week, uh, just a summary of all the things. There's going to be some um, like, like one week, last week we had gave you a way to download one of the, uh, a worksheet from the flip productivity system. And, um, you know, every week I try to add just some extra piece of value. I'm going to give you the introduction to the blog post. You're going to, um, learn more and more about the, the show each week, get a reminder for that. And, uh, you'll have, there'll be special offers from our sponsors. So there's just so much value. I'm trying to pack into that to really help you. Um, to help you move forward and help you get a vision for every area of life. That's what it, that's what this is all about. And um, so that's that. So that's all my announcements. Now, I told you we've been using the Flip Productivity Forms. Um, we, we haven't even touched on the plan form. I've only stepped, you know, shown you the produce forms and there's two of them. One is about um, how are you going to get it done? So it's about actual tactics around the things that you need to do to build your business, to get your vision, to make your vision vivid. And, um, and now this side, this form we're talking on is from ma about mastering your habits. So the question we're answering is what habits do you need to master? And I am suggesting in my flip productivity system that there are five primary habits when it comes to productivity that you need to master. And then each of those five categories, those five habits have some sub habits. So what we've talked about is organizing, tracking, acting, and waiting. Last week, I finished off on waiting. This week, I'm going to finish up with scheduling. Now, I don't think this is going to take long, but you know me. <laughs> one, one moment, I think I have nothing to say, and then all of a sudden, it just comes on. But what I want you to know is the last habit we need to master is scheduling. Now, it's funny because even if you feel like any one of those things that you have a strength, no matter what strength we all have, at some point, we still have some room to improve, right? There's still some, um, I heard somebody say the other day, um, you think your vision is clear until you write it down and that your vision does not become clear in your head. And oftentimes we think we're strong in something, we think we're solid, but then when you have to either teach it to somebody else or you have to explain it so that someone else understands it really, which is really, that's the task that you have when you're talking about building, right, making your vision vivid. You are making your vision vivid so that you can share it with other people so they can see it, they can see it at a glance. 
and you know the bible says that you know write my answer on a billboard so there's to be able to run by the billboard glance at it and get it and so until your vision is that clear it's not vivid and that means that other people can't run with you so uh, it, marketers, marketers, especially now in this digital age, are talking so much about how we can provide value and content and how we can um, promote ourselves as experts and all those things. We, we do that in Adam Red. But the thing is, the only way that you can build a solid personal brand and help people understand who you are and even sell something to them effectively is when you have made your vision vivid, Right. When you've written it down, when you have investigated, when you have turned it upside down, when you have questioned, it's questioned everything, when you have tested, when you've tried it, when you've adjusted, like it's a, it's a process, right? It's growth. It sounds like work, right? <laughs> it is a lot of work, but my, my hope for you is that I can help you get into a space where you are doing work that produces something inside of you that lights you up that ignites your days and it, 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 it inspires your action so that the work when you're done, that it's, it's worthwhile, that it's rewarding, that it is just fun because you see, you see your baby growing up. You know, when I was pregnant, it was so fun to look, you know, how you look in the baby book, there's baby books, it's, it's pro they're probably so much more advanced now, but it was so fun. I had a book that showed me every month what the child inside of me was was looking like, like what stage it was at, what what he was learning, what he could do, all those things. And it was so fascinating to watch it. And so when you are doing work that feeds you, work that you were born to do, no matter how difficult and challenging it may be to actually bring it to pass and birth it, you know, and bring it into the world, it's so cool to watch it grow up and watch it become what it's supposed to be at every stage. And sometimes you think you know what it's supposed to be, just like our children. You know, they come out and you think, oh, they're like this and they're 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 destined for this. Or you may be trying to get them to live out something that you want. But it's beautiful to watch them come into their own and, and make it through every stage of growth and development. And your business is like that. And so... I want you to get to a place where you can stand back like a proud mother, like a proud father and be like, that's my baby. Look what I did. Look, you know, look, look what it's become. Look who he is. Look, look how he's serving, you know, people. Look how he's making the difference. And um, it's beautiful. So that's where we're headed. Okay. And why we're going through all these steps and building this arc and, um, you know, and just bringing our ideas into reality and not just allowing them to fester. And again, if it's just in your head, no matter how long you've been thinking about it and no matter how well you think you really know it, until you have to share it with someone else, write it down. Just think about it. Whenever it comes time for you to write a social media post, is what is that process like for you? Oftentimes for many of us, if you have to write a blog post, if you need to write a letter, if somebody asks you, what's your elevator pitch? How, how do you feel about that? How are you able to give them something sound and solid that they will respond to? Like, and for most of us, the answer is no. But the only way we figure that out is by taking the time to dig in, to, to write, to rewrite, to edit, to like, I mean, to review we, and you just keep adding and building and letting it grow, right? So then it becomes something that is vivid. And it's just, you think about it with your personality and your business and your communication, all of those things. We have to work through all the details. Okay, so that's my sales pitch for why you need to do all this. But anyway, yeah, you got to know your elevator pitch, but you're never going to know it. Um, there's a book I just found. I actually just ordered it Um called uh, Strategy is Words. It just the title by itself hit me because the reality is everything is about words. You need to find the words to describe who you are, where you're going, what you're doing. Everything is about word lines, pictures, um, color, right? And those are the things that help bring a story together. But without the words, without 
working it and really understanding how to write your vision, none of it matters. You can have a bunch of pretty pictures, but if the words are stale and they don't really speak to the person that you're talking to, don't communicate it to them accurately, <laughs> you're not going to get very far. It'll be a very frustrating situation. And the thing is, we are all we're all starting from somewhere. We don't all just come out of the womb communicating perfectly. Your business is not going to come out the gate just ex- speaking exactly to everything and everybody. You can come out with a strong presence and a strong sense of what your business is and who your business is trying to reach, but that doesn't mean there's still no more room for growth. And that's what I want you to get used to. Get used to this growth process. Learn how to enjoy it, to embrace it, and to do everything you can to just just keep yourself good in the middle of it all. And that's I keep going back to referring back to the blog post this week. Gratitude is the gift you give yourself. If you learn how at every stage of your business to be grateful, to whether there's some internal stuff, you know, because what I say in the in the blog is that there's three forces at work, and that's you, that's people outside of you with the, out, at the external environment, and then it's just your general surroundings. I mean, it's you and other people, and then your surroundings. And um, you can't control any of that. All you can do is control you. But in the middle of it all, you can control your your attitude towards it. Your, if you can learn how to be grateful in spite of all the stuff that comes at you, you're going to find that the work that you are doing becomes much more gratifying. Okay. Okay. That was the second introduction to (laughs) my, to to our topic for tonight. So you want to master the habit of scheduling. And I, I started off on that last tangent because no matter how good you think or well you think you do in a particular area, like I feel like I'm a really organized person and that scheduling is comes naturally to me. But when I really think about it, if I dig into all of this, what I realize is I can see where my weaknesses are even in my strength. So if I can improve my performance, you think about a, 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 high, a high level athlete, a high performing athlete, when they're at the top of their game, you know, you have a certain amount of talent and experience that you can rely on. But if you want to move to the next level, oftentimes that's a matter of just like, you know, in the Olympics, a matter of seconds. And if they can improve their performance just by seconds, that could be the difference between a record, a world record, a, 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 a title. You know, that could be, you know, that could mean everything, just a small improvement. So what we want to do and what I want to challenge you to do is to identify just those things, how can you tweak it? So as I'm sharing with you the, the the subcategories and explaining, don't come at it like, oh yeah, I'm good at that. Yeah, I'm organized. I'm organized too. But what I'm seeing is there's some things about organizing that I can get better at. And that's what we want to do. So um, you, the habit to master for this, the last one this week is scheduling. And so there are four subcategories, tools, preparation, follow through and follow up. So <laughs> I'm going to, I'm not going to say, oh me until I get to the last one, but um, you want to schedule, you want to have tools to help you schedule first and foremost. So, and then you got to use the tools you have. That's the key, right? So, you know, whether you, I, I mentioned it, whether you have a digital calendar, a, a printed calendar, uh, all of the above. If you have an assistant, if you have, you have to master the habit of scheduling and you have to find tools, the right tools to help you for your lifestyle, for your personality, all those things. Sometimes you have to, you have to make yourself conform, right? And, and, uh, to a system instead of, or to, you may say, well, I, I just like using text. Well, Text, even though you may have gotten comfortable using it, you it may not be the best tool for where you want to go. So I, I want to challenge you, whatever tool you have or whatever tools you're using, and just do a little um, a little inventory and really be honest with yourself. Is this the best way? Because we're all we're all settled into things that we're comfortable with and that we like. But if you, let's say, 
if for instance, whatever it is you're using is not the best tool or you come to the conclusion that it's not the best tool for you to do what you need to do, would it be worth spending maybe a few hours, maybe a, like extra 15 minutes um, once a week every uh, or once a day? You know, Would it help you if you just spend a little bit of time investing in learning how to use another tool or how to figure out how to fit that into your life? Would it be worth it? So, um, and would it be worth it if that could get you closer to where you want to be and help you manage all the things that you have to in your life? Uh, remember, it's not, you can't get it. You make your vision vivid in your head and it doesn't matter how clear you think your idea is. It's not going to be completely vivid and it's not going to be clear to other people and even really to you so that you can communicate effectively to other people until you, um, you have a way to manage it outside of your head. And so a, the right tool is going to help you do that. It's going to help you schedule, schedule time to spend on the, 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 the activities that you deem the most important. Oftentimes what we do, they talk, we, you know, you hear all, uh, a lot in organizational, you know, search cir circles that, you know, we can spend most of, we spend most of our time dealing with what's urgent as opposed to what's important. And urgent is, you know, all the stuff that's blowing up around you, the kids that need this, the husband that comes in, the wife that interrupts, the job that needs this, the, the hurricane that invades your space and knocks down a tree. It's all these things outside of you that we are constantly responding to. Social media, every possible post and videos. I can get lost in YouTube videos and laughing on Facebook just when I try to just go do one thing. It's so easy to do. Those are the things that are urgent. They just come at you. It's like uh, like Wonder Woman, I said, you have to just get to a place where you learn how to just deflect all of those things, but you're not going to do it without some kind of tool. You need some help to figure it out. And, um, you know, I've known people who program their Alexa to tell them certain things at certain times. Uh, you know, my I have an Apple Watch is constantly giving me reminders. It's time to breathe. It's time to stand up. It's time to do this. Now, whether I do what it says, that's up to me at the moment. But the reality is, you have to have some kind of tool to help you schedule your life, schedule time. I find um, I'm writing a book and I have not have yet to schedule time to sit down and focus on it. And I have I have more content now because I'm doing the show. So it's much easier. I'm getting it transcribed every week. So I have a system, but I need to schedule time to move this forward. And there are other things going on in my business where I'm realizing if I don't schedule time for it, it's not going to happen. And so you have to do that. You have to schedule time for rest. We talked about rest last week. Rest is not something that you get to do just some special reward. Rest is part of the process. It's a celebration of creation. So I want you to, um, you got to master the habit of identifying and using tools that will help you schedule your life schedule, your time effectively so that you can spend it on the things that are the most important. Sometimes those are the most difficult things because it's easier to get interrupted and spend your time dealing with all these outside, these other things. But there's some things that are really super important. They're going to help you really move forward. And if you don't schedule the time, it's just not going to happen. Your exercise. We talk about getting a vision for every area of life, something in your business, something for your personal life. Some people call it self-care. You have to schedule it and make sure otherwise it won't happen. Time with your with your loved one. You have to schedule it sometimes, right? And um, you need some tools to help you. And I would say if you're talking about a calendar, you need to include your personal and your business on the same thing. You cannot operate multiple calendars. You're adding complexity where you don't really need to it's harder for your brain to function and get all that. Now, you might be so busy that you have to do it that way, What? but just to find a system that works for you, but look, identify tools to help you do it. I suggest electronic and printed. I have both. That way you're not stuck when you know the power goes out and you can't get online or the battery runs out on your phone. You, you have a system um, of how you're gonna use these tools and, um, and you identify them so that you can discipline yourself and, and establish the habit of scheduling, okay? 
And then the next is um, preparation. Ooh, I'm good. <laughs> so you have to schedule time to get to be prepared, to get prepared. And you know what do they say? If you if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. So if you schedule time, <laughs> right? Right. You gotta you gotta you gotta schedule time to prepare in your digital and your paper calendar. I just discovered after I don't know how many years of using my Google Calendar, I just discovered that I can add travel time. And what I've learned is even in this pandemic age where we're all meeting via Zoom and other electronic methods, if I had I, if I I still need to prepare for the meeting, right? I still have to spend time investing reading looking online, researching before I get in the meeting to make sure I know what I'm doing and talking about. And then once I get out of the meeting, I need some time to recoup so I can prepare for the next thing that I need to do. So you have to master the habit of scheduling time to prepare. So I, I finally, I'm just blown away by how long it took me to figure that out as long as I've been using this particular tool that you can add time before and time after. And in, in the Google Calendar world, it's called travel time. But whether you're traveling or not, you need to allocate time to prepare. And it's just, what does it do? It You know, I've gotten to the point now where I have so many things going on at one time that I feel comfortable, even if I'm under pressure, to kind of gather myself quickly. And that's a skill I have learned. But I, even if I do that well, I would still benefit just like anybody else would from having more time to prepare. But if I don't schedule it, I'm less likely to actually have the time. So you want to master the habit of scheduling time for preparation. It's reading. Sometimes it's preparation is just being quiet. Right? You don't have to necessarily be doing something. You just might need the time just to regroup just to get quiet for your mind to rest. And and before you step into that next thing, time to listen. It is amazing what you might hear, what you just what might come to you if you do that and then walk into the next thing ready because you're not still bombarded by all the thoughts and it and, and the energy and the, all the stuff that's happening from the last thing you just did and um and even um and I don't know if it fits in this just fits in this category perfectly but it reminds me even of of eating I typically will spend a day I've got so many things doing especially when I'm on a big deadline I might sit in front of my computer and I'm, I'll go grab might get up and go get something to eat and bring it back and sit down and just kind of munch on it while I'm still doing other things. Preparation, even if you just sit over a meal and just be quiet, not re watching anything, not listening to the phone, not looking, not just that by itself is a form of preparation because it's going to, you want to focus on what you're doing. You're getting the energy that you need to continue to function throughout the day. And then you're prepared when you're finished with that to go back. Okay, now I can focus. Uh, my husband has a fabulous habit. As soon as he gets tired, he stops working. He is not going to be sleepy. Right? <laughs> right, Ron? He is not going to be sleepy. He's not going to be falling over his computer like I do. He is going to wait until the next day to jump into that work. So he starts fresh. Um, I, I don't have that. <laughs> I don't have that ability. However, that is he's going to be prepared. It's a form of preparation so he can go step into what it is he has to do. And, and do that well and be focused. And I think when we master the habit of preparation, we give ourselves the opportunity to perform at higher levels um, with less energy because you're not dragging yourself through just, you know, just going from one thing to the, uh, the next without any rest for your brain at all. And then the next is follow through. You got to, yeah, focus. Thank you. That's so good. Focus is preparation. It really is. Um, yeah, that's, that's profound. Thank you. Um, so follow through is the next thing. You need to master the habit of scheduling time for follow through. I often say to my clients when we do events, 
I'm constantly saying the event is not the, the end all, right? The event is a catalyst for what happens next. You have to plan your follow through for that event and finish. If you are a racer, you know, sprinters, they run through the tape, right? They lean into it. You don't get to the finish line and start backing up. That's not follow through. If you if you play basketball, you you follow through as you you um I don't know what you call it <laughs> as you make your shot, right? As you shoot the shot, you got to follow through your form, right? And so you have follow through. You are just like an athlete as an entrepreneur. You have to follow through to finish the task. You don't want to. Um, you don't want to wash the dishes, you know, with your kids, your height, their teenagers. They want to wash the dishes and then have water and soap thrown everywhere. You want to, you got to, once you finish washing the dishes, you got to clean up, wipe, wipe the counters down, do all that's follow through. That's how you finish the entire job. You know, uh, when you are building something, what is, how, you don't want to see somebody, they, they've got their, the foundation is laid. They've got their frame done. They started, um, putting on a roof or whatever, putting the walls up and then they quit. And then they, they, you can't expect them to be able to move into that house. You got to follow through, you got to finish. And so, um, you have to develop a habit of doing that. I, I'm one of the, those that I'm, I, I'm a creative. So it's so easy for me to create solutions and go down a new rabbit trail. And I start this over here, start that over there, run into an obstacle. Oh, okay. Well, I'll leave that right there. I'm going to start this. And I am having to come back and go, you know what? I'm going to finish this and um, and I'm going to finish it. I'm going to follow through, like take it to the next step and follow through. Let me take back. I'm going to take back the finish word because follow through is not necessarily finishing because it, in, in the context of, of the projects, my own projects that even that I just mentioned, I have if I have a project and I'm not quite sure Oftentimes I stop because I'm not quite sure exactly what to do next or what I envision for it. I may have come up against an obstacle and not really know how to solve that problem. And now that project might be on the waiting, the wait list that we talked about last week. And um, so what I mean by follow through, follow through is you've got to take it as far as you know to take it so that it may not be finished but if you follow through and take it as far as you can take it and you develop that habit, you're going to find yourself finishing more, you know, eventually. But if you don't follow through from one, um, one step, one, one step in the process to the next, then you're never going to see everything come together the way that you want it to. OK, and then the last thing is follow up. You got to follow through to actually get the project done the way you want to. In the case of that event, you got to, with the event, you have to think through, okay, what do I want to happen after the event? How do I want to connect with the people who attended? What more can I provide them to support them? What's the next step I want them to take? If I've offered upsells and products and special things like I should, then what how do I deliver on that really well to follow through? But then even after that, you need to follow up. How many times have you placed an order on Amazon or any other um, other online platform, which if you're like me, you're just clicking away during COVID. We sitting here, got all kinds of time in the world. Um, but how many times do you place that order? And then what happens? You get it. They'll, they'll say, hey, it's coming. It's been shipped. Here's the tracking. You get the item. They say, hey, it was delivered. You Then you get an email asking you, hey, how did you like it? How do we do? Will you rate it? That's follow up. They're following up. You got it. They follow through by delivering it uh, and checking, letting you know that it was delivered. That's the follow through. The follow up is coming back and saying, hey, how'd you like it? Right. And how many times? So when you think about 
building your business, communicating. If Again, if your business is a corporation, if your business is like a person and you're trying to form a relationship with the, the people that you want to serve, the, the people whose problem you want to solve, then that re, in that relationship, don't you want some follow-up? Some You want to follow through to do what you said you would do. And you want to follow up to see how you did. Find out if the person actually was served if the problem that they had was actually solved do you understand so if you but if you don't schedule that in some way i believe you need to automate it in as as often as you can and so you know as a keep certified partner that's one of the things we do um, through the agencies we help our clients automate their processes automate their client journey so Building a brand is about the entire experience. It's not just about making the sale and getting people to like you and, and getting your likes and stuff on and Facebook and sharing and social media, and even getting their email. It is about a, establishing a relationship and delivering on what you promise and then following up to make sure that what you intended was the message that they got. If you solved the problem, if they, how did they feel about it? Did it arrive okay? Um, you know, what was the workshop experience like, right? So y'all gonna remind me after the workshop that I have to do that, right? And you have to schedule time um, to do that. Otherwise it won't happen. And part of it is just recognizing that you need that in part of it, that, that has to be part of your process, okay? And um, let me think. So I want to circle back and talk about, just remind you of what it is, what the word means, the habit, the word habit, the definition. So we ask, we're asking the question, what habits do you need to master? And you know, I give you a lot of information. It is never my intention to tell you that you have to do everything I say Every step, every sub point, every tangent that you have to do all of that all well all the time and do it all at the same time. That's not even possible. What we want to do is you want to identify the system, the processes, the secrets, you know, the brain hacks that I talk about. Um, you want to identify those things, like what the whole process is. You want to get a more more familiar with the process. Then you want to look at your system, your process against that and make a necessary adjustment. And you can find one to maybe three things that you want to try to work on in any given 90 day period. And if you do that, if you do that for a whole year, that's potentially, that's either 12 to 36 changes that you made in that year to move you closer to making your vision vivid. What would your what would it be like this time next year if you had right right Ron you got to massage the data. And if you if you could improve 12 to 36 things between now and next year in your business, where do you think you could be? And even if those are tiny things, it doesn't even have to be some big sweeping major change. If you could, you could improve in just those few, like just that one thing per month. If you could do that, what difference would it make? And so that's what it. That's when what I mean when I'm talking about mastery. To master your habits, first you've got to realize that you even need to make any kind of an adjustment. And so my intention around this whole the five the list of the five things the five habits is to help you identify a specific area and then I can help you in the flip productivity workshop to dig a little deeper and examine those the four categories under each one of those so that's 20 things so we can identify those things that you can focus on over a 90 day period and help you create some new habits. And I'm telling you, it'll make all the difference in the world because there's a lot that you're doing well instinctively. There's a lot that you know that you understand because you have the experience and you're capable. There's so much 
that is in you because you really are, you have it inside. You are gifted and graced to do the work that you that that is on your heart to do. But it's like anything else, you know, a, a machine has to be tuned. You know, it you, it doesn't just continue to work all the time. At some point, it wears out parts. You got to replace things. You have to keep it oiled. You have to do maintenance. We're the same way, the way we think, the way we function, the way we act. We can't just allow ourselves to get stuck and do everything the same way over and over and over again. That's what they call a rut. And the way you get out of a rut is you identify how you got there and change the habits that got you there. Change the habits, you know, trade them out for for habits and um, and disciplined, intentional actions that are going to move you in the direction that you want to go. So, and you got to know first where you want to go, right? At least, at least where you don't want, you can start with where I don't want. And then you can start with, okay, I want to replace that with this. That's called vision and vision. Getting a vision for every area of life is work. But when you start making decisions and lining your life up with who you were designed to be, that is play. And that's what this is all about. So that's, uh, so we're going to close it out with that. You were born to produce. You were born for it. You're destined and you you are entitled because it, it, it is part of your heritage and you have to make a decision that you're going to do whatever you need to do and there's no sweat. We're going to do it. You might sweat in terms of exertion, but we're not going to sweat in worry. We're not going to judge ourselves. You're going to step out and you know just get a piece of wisdom and that's what I'm trying to, that's what Gwen Fuchs is trying to bring to you. A piece of wisdom that you can use that's actionable, that's practical, and that you can that'll move you forward so that you can be more productive and you can build what you see in front of you. And you're gonna be amazed. It, it'll it'll be better than you could ever imagine. And then when you as you do it, it's gonna be amazing how everything around you starts to work with you instead of against you. And then in those seasons, when it feels like everything is working against you, you're going to learn how to give yourself the gift of gratitude. And that's going to help you weather the storm as you keep that vision out in front of you as, as a motivator. All right. I want to thank you so much for joining me. As always, I want to remind you to follow at Gwen Fuchsius on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Periscope, and Gwen Witherspoon Coach on YouTube. And my website is GwenWitherspoon.com. We'll go back there very quickly. I'll take you back to the homepage, GwenWitherspoon.com. You can contact me there. You can shop there. You can sign up for the workshop there. And um, you can find everything you need to do. Watch the show, everything at GwenWitherspoon.com. All the replays are there as well. And... I will see you as always next week at on next Wednesday. Oh, have an amazing holiday. I, I know some of you can be watching the replay, so um, it may be a little bit late, but thank you. Uh, enjoy your holiday. Uh, stay safe. Wear your mask. Don't be crazy. <laughs> Love all your folks at a distance so that uh, we can all get out of this COVID madness as quickly as possible. But I will see you next Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Bye-bye.